Hello and welcome. I hope you are enjoying the 2023 PKD Summit so far. My name is Emily Campbell and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. I'm so excited to be here for this lunch cooking demonstration and share my kale and chickpea Caesar salad recipe. So what can you expect over the next 30 minutes? Well, we're going to prepare an amazing kidney friendly recipe together that includes a homemade Caesar salad dressing and top with garlic chickpeas for a kidney friendly salad that will probably become a lunchtime favorite going forward. We're also going to be covering some more nutrition topics, tips and tricks. So let's get started. A healthy diet can have a huge impact with polycystic kidney disease, and it's never too early or too late to start learning about what you can do to, start to slow the progression of polycystic kidney disease with diet. Now, we talked about those top three things that we can start doing to make changes with PKD, and those include sodium, fluids, and including more plants in our diet. So today's cooking demonstration, we're gonna be incorporating all of these. While sodium, we can reduce from our Caesar salad dressing and we're gonna be looking at including more plants. So whether that be vegetables and also plant-based protein. And nutrition plays a really important role with PKD. It can help us to delay the progression by helping to prevent cysts from growing or new cysts from forming. And it also helps the kidneys work more efficiently so that the buildup of extra waste products don't happen. Nutrition can also help manage lab values like potassium and phosphorus and also other conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. And the right kidney-friendly diet when you have PKD is going to meet your nutrition needs, it's going to prevent cysts from growing, and it's going to reduce your kidney's workload. Uh, it's also going to help you manage other conditions. We can't think of nutrition in silo anymore. We need to think of the whole person and all of everything we need in our diet. So. We always want to focus on our plate when we're making our meals and different eating patterns that focus on a balanced plate tend to be the most sustainable nutrition habits. Of course, water should be that beverage of choice and it's really important to have enough fluids to prevent those cysts from growing. So if you uh, paid attention in our previous lesson on uh, nutrition for PKD, it's generally around three liters, but making sure you speak with your healthcare team to understand what your body needs is important. And, you know, when we think about our meals, an easy way is just thinking about what's on our plate, trying to make half of that be in vegetables, a quarter of it in protein. We're going to dive into what that might be in a, just a second and a quarter of it in carbohydrates or starches. Fruit is really great for a snack. So today for our uh, lovely kale and chickpea Caesar salad recipe, we have a few ingredients that we're going to use. So the first, of course, is chickpeas. So for this recipe, I am using uh, no added salt chickpeas. And this is a great thing that is a nutrition content claim on many of our products. And no added salt is an absolutely great option. There's lots of canned products that will say no added salt. Uh, these are great low sodium options that you can certainly include in it. Now, the nice part about this um, option is it's a plant-based protein. And plant-based proteins are really great to include into our diet when we have PKD. And we're gonna go into this in just a few seconds, but I wanna introduce all of our different uh, foods and then we'll start cooking. So we're also gonna be using a bit of olive oil, some red wine vinegar, have some Parmesan cheese. We're gonna use some fresh garlic, Dijon mustard, of course, we need our kale. And then we are also gonna need some garlic powder, black pepper, I have my grinder here. And that's all we need to make this really, really delicious lunch. Uh, we also need to preheat our oven to 425. So if you are cooking along, make sure you do that right now. Now, when we get started with any food preparation, it is really important that we think about food safety as well. So we want to make sure we're washing our hands for 20 seconds with warm soapy water. So if you didn't do that before uh, our getting started here, make sure you do that now because we're gonna be touching food and we wanna make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe. So from a plant-based protein side, the canned chickpeas are really great. And for this recipe, all we need is one can. Rinse them in the in some water. Dry them out for about five minutes. You can either dry them on a cookie sheet while the oven is preheating uh, or in a bowl. Now, the nice part about uh, canned chickpeas is they are a great plant-based protein. And protein is the basic building block for our human body. 
It's made up of amino acids and it plays a really important role in helping us to build muscle, build our hair, our skin, our nails, and it's a part of our organs as well. Most of our body's protein is located in our muscles. And, you know, most of the time when we focus on protein, we think a lot about those animal proteins like meat and fish and poultry, dairy, eggs, but there are so many other different types of proteins. So as we get started in our cooking demonstration, let's pop our chickpeas in the oven. So for our recipe, 425, we're gonna put them on a rimmed baking sheet, but first we need to toss them in a tablespoon of olive oil. So this is gonna help them crisp up enough and they are gonna go in the oven for uh, 20 minutes. We're gonna toss them halfway though. So just have my canned chickpeas here, toss in a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna put them in the oven. I've already got mine preheating to 425. So for this, For this recipe, we put them on a cookie sheet or a baking sheet and put a little bit of parchment paper on, which helps to uh, get them a little bit crispy. So I love a nice crispy chickpea on my salad. Uh, so that's kind of the goal I'm going for today. Now, talking a bit more about our proteins while that is in the oven, you know, protein plays such an important role. So it helps to regulate our body functions. It helps to build muscle and lean body tissue. It helps to transport different nutrients and oxygen and waste throughout the body as well. And our body uses, when it uses protein, it produces a waste. And this waste product gets removed from the kidneys. And too much protein can make the kidneys work harder. And too little protein is also not good because it can lead to malnutrition and weight loss. And Protein in its essence can be broken down into amino acids. And there's nine amino acids that are essential for human health and nutrition. Um, foods that have you know, all of those amino acids are called a complete protein. And animal proteins are a complete protein. So if you think about milk and eggs and fish, they have all of those nine amino acids, chicken, beef, pork, lamb, all of those. Proteins from plant-based soy sources like nuts or tofu or soybeans, they and some germ uh, grains of some germs like quinoa these are also complete proteins now some plant-based proteins they do have the complete protein but some don't have all of the um a nine essential amino acids and something like that is chickpeas so we'll talk a bit about how we can improve this now incomplete proteins which is what chickpeas are they have some of the amino acids but not all of them so we get different amino acids from things like legumes, we get different ones from peas and beans, different ones from corn and wheat and rice. And so how we pair these different types of uh, other types of proteins together or other foods helps us to form what's called a complementary protein. So, you know, sometimes we see recipes with beans and uh, rice in them, and that's because they have all the nine essential amino acids together. And, you know, essentially there's different ways for us to get all of these um, complete protein. So we can either consume animal foods, we can also combine plant and animal foods together, or if we consume plant-based proteins like chickpeas, lentils, legumes, we can pair them with different grain products like beans and uh, barley and couscous and really any of those ones that really get, uh, are nice and delicious in our body. And that's why having carbohydrates can be helpful for some. Now, you might be wondering, what type of protein should I be having, plant versus animal? Well. Plant-based proteins have less protein per serving, and depending on our overall protein budget, this can be helpful. So let's take a look at them. So animal proteins like chicken, fish, turkey, beef, lamb, they have about seven grams of protein per one ounce. And our hands are a really quick trick to estimate protein sources. So this kind of size of our palm or a deck of cards is about two and a half to three ounces. And, you know, it's about the thickness of our pinky and kind of the size of our palm. If yours is larger, then maybe the deck of cards is a better example. That means that a five ounce chicken breast, it's going to have about 35 grams of protein in it. So portion size is really important when we think about animal protein. You know, we live in a world that says 
we should have the uh, the 12 ounce steak when we go out for dinner or the half chicken. And so we end up eating quite a lot of protein. And when we think about the PKD diet, while it's not a low protein diet, it is a, a moderate protein. And we want to be eating what our body actually needs and not too much of it. Those plant-based proteins, though, on the other side, so these are things like beans and legumes and nuts and seeds and tofu, edamame, quinoa, they have less protein in them per serving. So if we take a look at our nutrition facts table, we can see at the top here where it says the serving size. So that serving size is going to be what the daily information and the rest of the table is based off of. So on our chickpeas here, half a cup has nine grams of protein in it, right? So we would have to eat just over one gram, one ounce of chicken. That's about this much. Sometimes I wonder, you know, this half a cup of chickpeas is probably gonna fill me up longer because it also has eight grams of fiber in it and the kidneys love fiber. So there are a few things to think about when we have plant-based protein. So heart disease and PKD are linked. And some foods that are more heart healthy, like nuts and seeds and chickpeas and lentils and beans and pulses are really great because they have lots of fiber in them. And this soluble fiber, it just helps to soak up cholesterol, can help to limit our, minimize our risk of heart disease. Um, and some like nuts and seeds, they also have omega-3 in them. So what else is really great about some of these plant-based proteins is that they will also have antioxidants and can be anti-inflammatory. So nuts and seeds, you know, they also have a bit of iron and calcium, and that helps to beat inflammation. Uh, they can also help to lower blood pressure. And that is also something really important when we have PKD. You know, we talk a lot about sodium, but there are foods that can help to lower our blood pressure as well. So from a, from a nutrition perspective, you know, um, managing our blood pressure is so important because that's often the first sign when we have PKD. Now, the star of our show is these chickpeas tonight. So beans and legumes are often two terms that are used interchangeably to describe a group of plants that belong to the legume family or the pea or the bean family. Legumes are this like really big category and that includes things like beans, lentils, peas. Beans are a specific type of legume. And these are the ones that have edible uh, seeds that contain pods. So beans come in different shapes and sizes and colors, and they're often used in cooking all around the world. So the general term is legumes, and that includes things like beans. So black beans, kidney beans, chickpeas, lentils, and peas, uh, like green peas, they're all really rich in plant-based protein, fiber, and vitamins like B vitamins and folate, also iron, uh, and magnesium, so those minerals are also important. And they can be used in things like soups and stews and salad like we're gonna do today, or as a meat substitute, things like tacos or in your uh, tomato sauce if you're having a pasta dish. So they certainly can be included in a balanced and very nutritious diet. And you know we can fulfill our protein requirements on a plant-based diet, but also there are so many other health benefits. So. These plant-based proteins are actually lower in phosphorus compared to animal proteins like meat or dairy. And depending on where we are in our kidney journey, we may need to limit phosphorus. Some of us may just be looking for added phosphorus on the food label. So remember we talked about that previously, um, but others, they might be focusing on other sources of phosphorus and your renal dietitian can definitely help you with that. Plant-based proteins can actually be included even if we are on a low potassium diet. And in fact, canned chickpeas are actually considered a low potassium food. So half a cup of chickpeas has 200 milligrams of potassium or 4% of our day. And we use that 200 milligrams to determine if something is high or low potassium food. So often we used to read online that if we were following a low potassium diet, we need to restrict our plant-based proteins, but that's really not the case. If canned beans are not, uh, in your repertoire and you use dried, that's also okay because you can soak them for 12 hours and then you can cook the chickpeas uh, for 150 minutes and that helps to reduce the amount of potassium in them as well. Not everyone though needs a potassium restriction. So it's really important that you speak with your renal dietitian or your nephrologist to understand kind of what your limits are. Fiber, that is one of the biggest things. So fiber is a big source in beans and legumes and that 
really stimulates the production of anti-inflammatory compounds in our gut and reduces those uremic toxins. Uh, so fiber also helps to prevent constipation. And it can, if we are not constipated, it's easier for us to get potassium out of our body, which is an added bonus. And also, you know, it helps to control our blood sugars. And we can certainly incorporate a lot of plant-based proteins, even the canned ones, because they are lower in sodium. And, you know, plant-based proteins, when they're prepared without added salt, uh, or, you know, from a drag standpoint, it really does help us to manage our blood pressure and also our fluid balance. So, you know, incorporate them in a soup, in a pasta dish, or on a salad. There's so many other great ways that we can do it. Now, our chickpeas have been in there for 10 minutes. So I said halfway through, we need to turn them over. So I'm just going to take a moment and do that. We're going to talk about another plant-based protein that might be something new for you, and that could be tofu. So half a cup of tofu, which is soy-based protein, has 10 grams of protein, and it is a great complete protein. And one of the best ways to enjoy tofu is in a stir fry. Um, and a stir fry is a cooking technique that uses a little bit of oil and high heat. Um, it's really great for plant-based proteins, and you can add endless amounts of vegetables. So. You know, one of the most common are things like mushrooms, broccoli, onions, bell peppers, cauliflower, zucchini, really the options are endless. And so are the sauces when we think about tofu because tofu just absorbs all of the sauce that we're using. Um, you know, you could use like a, a low sodium soy sauce, just a small amount, or coconut amino is another really great low sodium option. Maybe put in some garlic and ginger and chilies and there's just so many options from kind of a, a tofu thing. You know, maybe use hummus, maybe use quinoa. There's a lot of really great uh, plant-based proteins on there. They have less acid load on our body, so it helps us to manage the acid-base balance, uh, which in turn preserves our kidney function. So the right amount of protein is gonna be different, right? Depending on our body size, our nutritional status, the cause of our kidney problems, and, and any other health conditions we might have. Too little protein can lead to malnutrition at any stage of kidney disease. Um, and too much protein can cause disease to progress depending on the cause of our kidney disease. So speaking with a renal dietitian is really, really important uh, because that is how we uh, can help to preserve your kidney function, but also to um, keep cysts from forming. So, wow, that was a great discussion about plant-based proteins. Let's keep talking about our recipe here and keep cooking because our chickpeas are going to be done in about 10 minutes. And I wanna make sure that we get to enjoy this together before the sessions restart. So the main attraction of our um, salad here is kale. So kale is a lovely, lovely leafy green for us. And it is actually a vegetable in the cruciferous family. So it's related to broccoli or Brussels sprouts and it is a vitamin packed vegetable. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about some of the really great benefits of it. And there are actually different types of kale. So there's curly kale, there's dinosaur kale, uh, which has like narrow and wrinkly leaves, whereas curly kale has these like wide ruffled leaves. And so for this recipe, we actually need 16 cups of chopped kale. So I have washed mine ahead of time. So remember from a food safety perspective, important to wash our vegetables and fruit with a just water and then we just need them to dry off. Now, when we're thinking about kale, this might be a new vegetable for you. And it does come with a lot of really good nutrients, but it also needs a little bit of love when it wants to be enjoyed. So kale, we are actually gonna massage this for two minutes. And what happens is it helps to soften it. And the softer kale is, the easier it is for us to enjoy. And all of the great fiber and, um, is still there even though we're kind of massaging it and breaking it down. And one um, one of the nice things about kale is that the flavors, they just come out much more as we are um, uh, massaging it. So just you know, using our clean hands here, we're just gonna put them in and massage our kale. And I'm gonna talk about kale as we do this. So one cup of kale actually has about 20% of our daily intake of vitamin A. And vitamin A is important for eye health. And it also has uh, vitamin C in it, which is also important for us that are following a plant-based diet. So we need vitamin C foods to help 
um, increase the absorption of non-heme iron from our uh, plant-based sources, and chickpeas would be one of those plant-based sources. And kale has a lot of other really great nutrients. So it can support heart health uh, because it is a source of potassium um, and fiber. It also can help with our blood pressure because of the potassium and magnesium. It can actually help to lower blood pressure. So we know that diets like the DASH diet is really great at lowering blood pressure. And that's because all of the foods that it highlights are have things like calcium and magnesium and potassium in them. And we can still follow a DASH diet even if we have a high potassium. So that's where a dietitian comes in handy. Kale is actually a good source of non-dairy calcium as well. And uh, we need calcium, of course, in our body to keep our muscles strong, as well as our bones and our teeth. And if we don't get enough calcium from the foods we eat, like dairy products, um, we may need a supplement. And your healthcare team would be able to answer that question based on your blood work, of whether or not you need a calcium supplement. Um, but we can use really great other uh, sources in our uh, diet. We're going to use a bit of cheese today, and that will have some calcium in it as well. Um, but we can also use other sources to get calcium in our diet. And one thing to know with kale, if it is a new vegetable for you, is that it is a really big source of vitamin K. And vitamin K is normally fine for many of us, but if we are taking blood thinners, uh, it is important to check with our doctor before adding kale into our diet. The thing with um, blood thinners and vitamin K is eating the same amount of vitamin K foods every day is important. So if we're adding in a new food into our diet, we just want to make sure that our blood numbers are not changing. Oh. Kale is actually also, even though it is a leafy green vegetable, it's actually a low oxalate vegetable. And this might be something that you've read online uh, with kidney disease. Uh, and PKD specifically, because sometimes in the world, we talk about oxalates in the context of kidney stones, and individuals with PKD may form kidney stones more often. Now, if you have high oxalates in your urine, it might be important for you to um, limit how much oxalate you're intaking. So speaking with your doctor to do a 24-hour urine is a really great way of checking to see how much oxalate you have in your diet. But regardless, Kale is a low oxalate leafy green, whereas spinach is a high oxalate leafy green. So we can modify the types of foods that we have, which helps us to incorporate those. So my kale has really kind of shrunk down here, which is not a bad thing. Uh, it's all massage, it's much darker. You can see it's very, very looking very delicious. So let's talk about a couple other things while our chickpeas are finishing up here. So when uh, we need to make our Caesar salad dressing, which is going to be kind of the star of the show. Oh. So to prepare our Caesar salad dressing, we are going to mix a few things together. We are going to mix the remaining amounts of olive oil. So that is going to be three tablespoons. And olive oil is a great unsaturated fat which means that it has heart healthy fats in it. And this is important, of course, to manage our cholesterol levels. Uh, not only does olive oil have those heart healthy fats, but it also has omega-3 in it. Um, so it helps us to fight inflammation and with kidney conditions, that is what we want to do. We're also gonna use red wine vinegar. So I love different vinegars in cooking, whether that be you know, red wine vinegar, white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, they're a really great way of adding flavor to our foods without adding salt. So we're going to do three tablespoons of red wine vinegar for this one. And one thing I should remind you of when we're cooking with different oils, sorry, just to go back with the oils, is um, olive oil cooks at a lower cooking temperature and, compared to other oils. So, um, when when we are using it at higher temperatures, we might need to use a different type of oil, like a canola oil or an avocado oil or a walnut oil still has uh, the omega threes in it. So when we think about our dressing here, because that's what we're getting to, we're going to make this delicious Caesar salad dressing. We have three tablespoons of olive oil, three tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and then I am also going to put four tablespoons of low sodium uh, Parmesan cheese. So you might be thinking, Parmesan cheese, but that has salt in it. 
So this is where label reading becomes very, very important at the grocery store. And thinking about, you know, 10% or less for sodium is a really great way of finding the portion size. So this recipe or this label is based on three tablespoons, but my entire recipe uses four tablespoons. So we sometimes get to do a little bit of math and figure out if this food can truly fit into our diet. So depending on how much, this is why the serving size is so important. Because this recipe makes enough for four people, we're actually only getting one tablespoon of um, Parmesan cheese in our recipe per person. Whereas this nutrition fact table is based on three tablespoons. So we can actually divide the percentage by three and figure out how much sodium we are truly getting from this. So this, um, this is actually a peppercorn romano. That's what I was able to find. But the recipe calls for a Parmesan cheese. You could also use a Grana Padano, any of those. But in one tablespoon, it only has 4% sodium. And that is a really great option. It also depends on whether you, not, uh, you want cheeps, sheep or cow's dairy. Uh, either way, great source of sodium. So you can swap in what you can get at your grocery store as well. And that is the nice part about cooking and reading food labels is it allows you to develop those food skills of choosing some of these nutritious foods that you often might have thought you couldn't have. And what I love about cheese is that you are also getting some of your calcium, right? So keeping those bones strong. So into our um, oil and our vinegar, we are going to put our Parmesan cheese. So our four tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. We are also going to put garlic. So if you've ever cooked with me or, you know, uh, talked to me, I love garlic as an option for flavoring food. And all I'm doing right now is taking our garlic, taking it out of here. What we are doing is we are going to flatten it so oh, we have to flatten it. That helps to get all of the flavors out. And then we are going to chop this. So this is my time to not cut myself as we are cutting these. Uh, I probably could do with a knife course. So if anyone in my family is watching today, that might be a nice gift idea at some point in my life. If anyone has any knife skill courses that they've taken and they want to share, I'm always open. So we are using four cloves of garlic in this recipe today, and we are going to put them in the bowl with our Parmesan cheese and also our oil. And then we are going to mix it up here. So while that is getting ready, we also have one other thing left to add to our recipe, and that is Dijon mustard. So Dijon mustard is often something we also think is too high in sodium. Uh, different condiments, they certainly can uh, prepare or can add a bit of um, sodium to our diet. In this recipe, we are just using a Dijon mustard. Any low sodium Dijon mustard works. Now, we have the nutrition information for this entire recipe, which is absolutely wonderful. And even though this Dijon mustard, you know, we often think is quite high in sodium, there is only 150 milligrams of salt in the entire recipe. So we are going to use two tablespoons of Dijon mustard as well in our salad dressing. then we are going to mix this together now. This is going to be our homemade Caesar salad dressing. And that is going to coat all of our delicious kale in just a few minutes. Now, if you are a pepper fan, you definitely could add a bit of pepper in here too. I will add a little bit now. Now, the big source of salt in this recipe is going to be from the cheese and going to be from the Dijon mustard. So we don't need to add any more salt to other sources in here. And remember that it's not a no salt diet. It is a low sodium diet. So that is also something really important for us to consider when we are thinking about our uh, food sources. So remember, everyone kind of is following a lower sodium diet. That doesn't mean salt is, is out of the picture. And so that's why we can use some of these products to add them into our diet. 
So I think my chickpeas are done. I'm gonna take them out of the oven while they're cooling. We're gonna chat a little bit about meal planning. Those look delicious. So meal planning is very different than meal prepping. Meal planning is thinking about the meals that we want to have for the week. We don't have to spend our entire weekend preparing meals. This is not always sustainable. It can be super tedious and we might not actually want to eat those foods by the end of the week. Meal planning is much more effective. So it's really taking a look at the foods that we're gonna have for the week and making sure that they are available and ready to eat. So at the end of the day, meal planning is just making sure we have the right foods available. And you know, cooking at home is a really great way to add different herbs and spices. It can help us to reduce sodium intake. We can use fresh frozen or canned vegetables and fruit. You know, those frozen and canned vegetables and fruit that are low in sodium, no sugar, they're really convenient, right? And oftentimes people tell me they don't think that they can have these foods. But what we do know is that, you know, fresh berries, they might be imported during the winter months and frozen ones can be a really nutritious choice if they were picked in their prime ripeness. And, you know, we can use some of those, um, canned products like no added salt tomatoes it's a really great um staple you know things like the no added salt canned chickpeas or broth low sodium tuna or salmon you know peanut butter all of these things are really great things to also incorporate in our diet that can help us with meal planning and then look for vegetables that are going to last longer right so things like snap peas or green beans broccoli cauliflower bell pepper different fruits like apples or oranges are really great options and so when we think about meal planning, try to spend five to 10 minutes once a week, mark it on your calendar, have it as a meeting for yourself. Choose the meals that you need to have the right ingredients for. So you might not need to cook every night, right? Pick a number of days. For example, I cook three days a week uh, and eat, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'll cook again, uh, maybe on Friday. So having leftovers on Thursday helps, you know, me a little bit in my weekly routine. And maybe if you're just getting started with meal planning, just choose one meal to prepare. Maybe that's lunch or dinner. And when we think about you know, meal planning, it's thinking about what we need to have on hand. So think about those vegetables, make the, those the majority of your meal. Then think about you know, that protein source, whether it be plant or animal, and then the carbohydrate if you choose to incorporate it. And you know, this salad is really great to be made as leftovers. And you can certainly, you know, get some of these really great containers to store your foods in. That way you have leftovers. Um, and so when we think about meal planning, you know, it's having the right food and the right tools available for us to make sure that we can enjoy them. So we're going to enjoy our kale Caesar salad soon. So I'm going to toss the salad dressing onto our massaged kale here. And then we just need to season our chickpeas and then we are going to enjoy this. So, we got all the salad dressing here, mixing it all into the kale. That is the best part. I also have a lovely bowl here that I'm going to serve it in tonight. This is a really big meal. You may even get more than four served pass out of it. But remembering, whenever we're thinking about our meals, we really want half of that meal to be in vegetables. And so this is a great way of getting there. So we still need to season our chickpeas because we can't just eat those plain. So our chickpeas are nice and really, really crispy. And all we're gonna do to season them, it's very, very easy is we are going to use some garlic powder. So I love garlic. I use it all the time in my cooking. Um, I just think it's so very flavorful. It has obviously no salt in it. Uh, you could also use onion powder. You could use paprika. There are so many options that you could use to season things. But these aromatics, they give us a lot of seasoning without any uh, of the salt. So similarly, you know, that's why we're using vinegar. We can also use things like uh, lemon or lime to season our foods. And so we have two teaspoons of garlic powder. And I love the different herbs and spices. I just get them at 
bulk food store or uh, from your local grocery store, both of those are really great options. And then we want a teaspoon of black pepper on our chickpeas. So because I'm using the same bowl that had our uh, olive oil and chickpeas in them before, that's helping to get some of the seasoning on. So as you can see, we have a very, very delicious seasoned chickpeas now. And all we are going to do is put these in with our uh, onto our kale salad, and we're going to enjoy it with a slice of whole grain bread because we want to get those complete proteins. Oh, let's take a look at this here. So, here you have it, kale and chickpea Caesar salad. This is going to be great for lunch. It's You can definitely take it for leftovers if you don't finish it all. But really, it is a delicious kidney-friendly option that you can prepare. Um, I hope this showed you that there are lots of great foods that we can still enjoy when we have PKD, some different tips and tricks when we're grocery shopping and planning meals. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your lunch.